welcome to Learning with Lulu. In this video, we are going to do a summary of chapter 9 in the Scarlet Letter, which is called The Leech. So in chapter 9, we are getting a look at both Roger Chillingworth, which as a reminder, that is Hester's husband who was lost uh, for quite some time. She, he's made her swear to secrecy and all of that. Also a reminder, he was the one in the last chapter when she was at the governor's mansion that was like, let's figure out who the husband is. And the others were like, no, God will reveal that in time. So we get a closer look at Chillingworth and Reverend Dimsdale, which there have been many hints and indications as to the part he plays in Hester's life. This chapter shows that more. I'm trying to avoid saying anything outright, but throughout these summary videos, I've kind of been trying to ask you to pay close attention to certain things that are said, certain looks, certain actions, words, behaviors, all of that, because they are revealing, and this chapter continues to do that regarding Dimsdale. Chillingworth has decided to remain in Boston. He has hidden his true identity, his past, from everyone in the community. The only person who knows his true identity is Hester, and he has sworn her to secrecy. Because he is well-trained in not only European sciences, but also he was captured by Native Americans and lived for some time with Native Americans, he is very familiar with European approach to medical care as well as indigenous herbalism and I want to say even I believe the chapter even mentions uh, chanting and healing modalities of that sort. So he is very well equipped to be a doctor in the community. He's valued for that reason. The previous medical care people that they had providing medicine for them weren't really good at what they did and so Roger Chillingworth, he is providing a very valuable service to this community because he has such a wide scope of knowledge regarding that. In this chapter, it is focusing mainly on Chillingworth and Dimsdale. It does kind of set them up as science being Chillingworth and spirituality being Dimsdale. It doesn't, especially at the beginning, it doesn't necessarily say that they are at odds with each other or opposed to each other. Uh, sometimes there is this trend in people's understandings that science and spirituality have to oppose each other, and that's not necessarily the case. That's certainly not the case in, you know, how my personal viewpoint of things. Anyway, so this chapter does have Chillingworth, a science, Dimsdale, a spirituality, showing how those two work and interact by these two living in close quarters with each other. In this chapter, and the title of this chapter, Chillingworth is referred to as the leech. At that time, doctors often used leeches to essentially, I believe, attach <laughs> to people, and then they believed in the leech drawing out the blood. They thought that the leech could like draw the disease out of people. That, of course, I'm sure there are some instances where maybe that would be useful, like if someone has been poisoned and you need to draw it out. I think if someone is has a injury that is swelling too much, uh, you might want to use a leech to draw out the blood. But for the most part, our blood is very necessary and draining your body of blood actually isn't helpful because your body needs that to help. Anyway, at the time, it was a common practice of doctors though to use leeches and so he was called the leech. It is also indicative of a symbolic attribute of Chillingworth being a leech. Perhaps by the end of my, this summary you'll see kind of what I mean. So Reverend Dimsdale, he is unwell. The community is really concerned about him because they value him so much, they want him to be strong and healthy and recover from whatever is ailing him. It says that he'll often clutch at his heart and he, I think it describes him as pale and losing his, like, 
the color from his face and he needs medical attention. Chillingworth is the one who essentially is attached, then becomes like attached to him in the sense that he is the doctor and this is his patient and they kind of become that. There's a widow in town whose home is large enough to accommodate both of them and I want to say it's also by a cemetery. So they both move into this home. Chillingworth is able to live in close, close quarters to his patient and subsequently tend to him as often as is needed. Part of this circumstance where they have both moved into this widow's house, the chapter takes a little bit to talk about how Dimsdale isn't getting married and it says that there are plenty of young women who would be willing to attach themselves to him but he rejects any sort of uh, advances in that of that nature. It says how he is ever devoted to kind of playing that role of, you know, the celibate priest almost, which is how the community views it. But if you look at the circumstances at all, you'll see that that perhaps is not the case. And with Roger Chillingworth, how his deformity is in the case of this text and in the case of literature using certain things to express inward traits. It's almost a outward manifestation of who he is on the inside. And likewise, Dimsdale's illness, his heart paining him frequently, his refusal to attach himself to any interested and willing young woman who want to be his wife, his illness is also an outward manifestation of something internal going on. The community is at first really grateful for Chillingworth taking time and striving to tend to their beloved young reverend. And like I said, they take rooms in this widow's home. It does take a minute to talk about their rooms. It says that Roger Chillingworth's room essentially becomes a laboratory whereas Dimsdale's room is, you know, the room of clergyman who's interested in theology and it's got tapestries depicting biblical scenes, but not just any biblical scenes, specifically ones that have to do with adultery. So there you have it. As I said though, it's only at first that the townspeople are grateful to Chillingsworth pretending to Dimsdale. After some time, they feel like something changes. And it says that they feel like Roger Chillingsworth face changes into almost having like a malevolent kind of evil look. And they say that, you know, the, the fire in his laboratory, where is that really from? And, you know, it's starting to kind of speculate that he especially because some of his knowledge comes from indigenous resources, they start questioning him. They feel like his face takes on a evil, malicious look, like I said, and rumors are spreading about Chillingsworth, and by the end of the chapter, it turns to the townspeople more kind of thinking that, you know, Chillingsworth is the devil or he's in league with the devil and here to kind of bring down Dimsdale's eternal soul. So I do want to point out that mm, there may be something to the look in Chillingworth's face changing. Remember when he talked with Hester, he said, I am going to figure out who the, you know, who Pearl's father is. And perhaps the change in his face is because he thinks he's finally sorted it out. Just suggesting that. Let me know your perspectives and thoughts on that as well. With that being said, that's essentially chapter nine in the Scarlet Letter. If this video has come in useful to you, please make sure to subscribe, like the video, and share with others that you know may benefit and um, make sure to check out other uh, book 
chapter summaries that I have available on here uh, in case any of those may also come in useful to you. Again, please comment any thoughts you have on this chapter down below, any critiques of the characters, or uh, perhaps things that you have stood out to you that I have not mentioned here. And yeah, just in general, let me know your thoughts. Thank you so much for your support of the channel and for watching and listening. And I hope to continue to offer you value in these videos. There you have it. So thanks for watching and bye.